Once you're using an automated method of obtaining TLS certificates for your devices, then you need to manage and monitor them. And the reason for that is because a certificate will have an expiry date, or at least it should if you're concerned about security. So you need to be proactive and replace certificates before they expire. Otherwise, a browser will either complain when the certificate expires, and so will the users, or still, a browser will just refuse to connect to a device. Now, an interesting open source combination of monitoring tools that's available for free is Prometheus and Grafana. But how do you configure Prometheus and Grafana to monitor TLS certificates? Well, if that's something that you're interested in finding out, then stick around and watch this video, as that's what we'll be going over. Now, because this video is specifically about monitoring TLS certificates, I'm going to assume that you already have Prometheus and Grafana installed, or you know how to set these up. If not, I do have another video which shows you how to install and configure these in Docker. Now, what we're going to be using to actually monitor our TLS certificates is the black box exporter. So first thing that we need to do is to install that. Now I'm using Docker Compose. So I'm going to use nano to edit the docker-compose YML file. This is already being set up. So all I need to do is go to the end of the file here. Then I'm going to copy and paste in the details for this actual container. And what this contains is basically the same information you'll find on the GitHub web page. I've just adapted it for Docker uh, Compose. So we've got details of the image we want to use, the name of the container, just to make it a bit easier to identify. Default port is 9115. For restart, I do want the actual container to actually restart if the computer reboots, for example. But if I want to carry out maintenance, then if I actually manually stop this container, I don't want it to automatically uh, start up again. So that's why I've got it set to unless dash stop instead of always. Now, the actual exporter does need a configuration file. From the perspective of the actual container, it's got a folder called slash config. What we're going to do is we're actually going to create a folder called black box within the uh, current working directory where docker compose.yml exists. That's why I've got the dot and then the slash. So that just makes it easy because you need a configuration file that's got to exist outside of the container itself. So that's what that mapping's for. And then you've got a command there just to actually let the actual exporter know what the configuration file is. But again, this is from the perspective of the container. Its perspective is there's a folder called slash config and then there is an actual file called blackbox.yml. That file is actually going to exist within our actual real folder of black box. So now that we've defined the container, I'm just going to exit out and save this actual file. Now, the next thing to do is to set up the configuration file for this exporter. But before I can even do that, I've got to create the folder where we'll be storing it. So this folder is getting called black box. That's the same name that gets referenced within the actual uh, containers config file. Then we'll create the file itself. And this is going to get called blackbox.yml. Then in there, I'm going to copy and paste in the configuration. Now, this is being taken from an example on the GitHub web page. And all I've done is to add in this extra module. So it's entirely up to you whether you want to include all these other modules or not. But they're a useful example for other types of connections you can test. But as far as this video, Goes, we've got a module called https underscore 2 xx You can call it something else if you like. I've then got a setting of fail underscore if underscore not underscore SSL. In other words, I want to make sure that I'm on a secure connection because by default this is set to false, so I'm deliberately setting it to true for that reason. The whole reason I want this module is to actually test these TLS certificates. For the method, we're using get, so just like a web browser, it'll connect to the server and then use a get command to pull the information down. And then I've got a setting here of follow underscore redirects. If you look at older examples, this is referred to as no underscore follow underscore redirects. So this newer version makes a lot more sense. Uh, it's a lot easier to understand because it's the older version was basically reverse logic. So this is a lot easier to um to understand because it's just basically saying is are you going to allow the actual server to redirect your session? Well, I don't want that because there's the risk of an, an actual server directing me from an HTTPS session to an HTTP session. And that's not going to help if I'm trying to monitor um, these TLS certificates. So I've set that to false. For the preferred IP protocol, by default, it's IPv6. 
So because I'm using IPv4, I do have to specify that. And because I'm using my own certificate authority, the actual computer is not going to trust any certificates that it sees unless I actually tell it about the root certificate. So if you're using a, a public certificate authority, you're fine. If you're using your own certificate authority, then you do have to point it to your root uh, certificate file. The only thing to actually point out here is that we're looking at things from the container's perspective. So yes, I will be putting this file that we've got here for my root CA into this black box folder. But from the container's perspective, the folder's called config. So just something to bear in mind. And then after that, we've got the type of prober. And then we've got a timeout of five seconds. So I'll just save that config. And then I need to copy across my actual certificate file uh, for my root certificate uh, authority. And then what we can do is actually start up this container. So because I'm using Docker Compose, we we'll do Docker Compose up, then dash D. In other words, it's going to bring up all containers that are referenced in that YAML file unless they're already running. But it's going to do it in the background because of that dash D option. So I'll hit return. So this should be quick because I've already got the image downloaded. And then what I can do is just do Docker PS. And I'll do dash L as an option because it'll just tell me about the last uh, container. So it's up. I'm not seeing a, uh, any warnings about a restart. So that looks to be fine. The thing to point out is we're running on that default port of 9115. But we've now got the actual exporter up and running. Now, the next thing to do is to configure Prometheus to actually scrape the metrics from this exporter. So what I need to do is to edit a configuration file called prometheus.yml. And for me, that's in a folder called Prometheus. And then I need to copy and paste in the actual job for this exporter. So I'll just go to the end of the file here. Now, this actual job is based on the example you get from the GitHub web page. Key things to point out is that I'm using a module here called HTTPS underscore 2XX. In other words, that's the actual module that we defined within the exporter's configuration file. So you need to make sure that's correct. Then when it comes to the targets, I've got it pointing at two Apache web servers as a test. Now, if you note here, I'm using the fully qualified domain name as well as HTTPS here. And the reason being is typically a TLS certificate is going to be based on a fully qualified domain name. Now, because these are just your basic web server, I can just basically get away with pointing at the root folder. It won't matter. But if you're dealing with an actual server that's going to do a redirect to some other landing page, make sure that that URL is the actual final landing page. So as an example, TrueNAS, for example, if you were just pointing your web browser at the actual root folder, you'd get redirected to the login page. So it would really be the login page that we'd want to put here because the way I've got this black box ex uh, exporter set up is that it doesn't tolerate redirects. So as I say, do be careful exactly what URL you put in here. It's best to test it in the web browser first to make sure that you actually know what the final landing page is. Now, what they do within this job, because the exporter isn't running as an agent on the server, is to do some relabeling. And then finally, you actually point to the IP address and port uh, that the actual black box server is listening on. Now, if this had been a bare metal computer or a virtual machine and I had all of this running uh, as individual services, then I could have just used localhost, for example. But because I'm using this all on a Docker platform, I can't use that. It wouldn't work. I've got to use the actual IP address of the computer to get this to work. So we'll save my configuration file. And the next thing to do is to actually reload Prometheus because it, it needs to actually get that configuration file updated and loaded into memory. Now, one option is to actually reload the container in my case, but um, the way I've got this set up is I can actually get it to reload uh, the actual configuration file. I can get it actually loaded uh, on the fly. And I can do that using the curl command. So I'd just basically post an actual command to it and tell it to reload. In this case, I can use localhost because um, as far as the computer is concerned, there's a service on here listening on port 9090, which is Prometheus. So I'm just going to run that. And now what I've got to do is just basically wait for this to all kick into action, basically, because although I've updated the configuration for Prometheus and I actually got it to load that config into memory, I've still got to wait for the timer before it actually starts doing anything. 
Well, I've left this a while to actually start gathering metrics, and now we can actually check them on Prometheus itself, for instance. So if we go to status and then to targets, you can see I've got a reference here for black box, and it's saying two of two up. And if I click on show more, for instance, you can see we're actually seeing a state for these two uh, actual targets as up. But that doesn't really tell us much, especially about the actual TLS certificates. To get that information, we have to go and query the actual exporter itself. And for me, that's going to be on port 9115 of this same computer. And that's what I get when I point the web browser uh, to the actual computer on port 9115. Uh, if I click on the actual refresh button there, you can see how it's regularly pulling these actual um, Apache servers that I've set up. So we've got our Apache 1 and Apache 2. Now, one of them is showing an actual result of success and another one is actually showing a result of failure. Now, that's to be expected in my case because I actually have deliberately set this up so that the actual certificate for server 2 has actually expired. You can find more information if you click on the logs, for instance, here. Scroll through this and it's just saying fail to actually verify the certificate. The certificate has expired, expired or is not valid. And as in my case, it has actually expired. So checking on Prometheus itself is a, a useful way to test at least if the connectivity to the actual servers there. In other words, the server's still uh, listening and uh, active. Whereas if we go to the actual exporter, we can find out more details about problems, specifically about things like you know, certificates expiring. Now, the final thing to do is to set up a dashboard in Grafana. And although you can actually do that yourself, fortunately, there are people actually creating dashboards and making them available for free. So when it comes to this exporter, we're going to take advantage of this dashboard called Blackbox Exporter HTTP Prober. And what we're going to do is click on the option Copy ID to Clipboard, then go over to Grafana, select the menu, and then select Dashboards. I'll then click on the option New, and then select Import. And then what I'll do is just copy and paste in the actual ID, and then click on Load. You can change the name if you like, but do need to make sure you select uh, the actual data source, which is Prometheus, and then click on Import. And there you go. We've now actually got a much better way of actually monitoring our actual servers as well as the actual certificates on them. So I've actually got two targets uh, set up for this exporter. Not surprisingly, I've got one showing a status of up, the other one's showing a status of down. But you can get some really useful information out of these. So, for example, it's coming back for this one showing a code of 200, which is what you'd expect at the TLS side of it, or SSL as they're referring to it works. You even get the TLS version that's used as well as the actual expiry data. So this is extremely useful. It lets you know how long you've actually got left on that actual um, certificate in terms of how long it's going to be before it expires. So this is a great way to actually monitor your certificates. Now, ideally, what you want to do is stay ahead of the curve here and be more proactive. You don't want to reach a status of down because the actual certificate has expired. So you do want to keep an eye on these uh, actual expiry days, but it's an extremely useful way to be able to monitor these TLS certificates. Now, if you find this video to be useful, then do consider subscribing to the channel, as that would really mean a lot to me. But it's also a good indicator to let me know how videos like this are helpful to people such as yourself that are watching, in which case, Thank you. On the other hand, if you're not ready for that level of commitment, then I'd really appreciate it if you could press the like button, because that way that will help to get the video out to other people that might find it useful as well.